Today on the show, we're going to be talking about Josh Foley from the X-Men, also known as Elixir. If you didn't know that he was originally part of an anti-mutant group, then this show is for you. So Josh Foley would first appear in New Mutants Volume 2, Number 5 in 2003. So Josh would have his beginnings by joining the Reavers, which were an anti-mutant group. But Cerebra would detect a mutant amongst the group, so a few members of the X-Men would go to investigate. It's when the Reavers began to attack Xavier Institute students that Josh's powers would manifest. He managed to hide them for quite some time, but eventually he would feel inclined to heal Laurie Collins. When the Reavers found out the truth about his powers, they rejected him totally, and he was offered a place at the X-Mansion, but he refused this because he kind of blamed the X-Men for his powers. He went home and the Reavers were there waiting to beat him up. And after he was beaten, his parents found out about his mutant abilities and disowned him. Having nowhere else to go, he joined the Xavier Institute. And by disowning him, I mean totally disowning him. They renounced Josh as their son and handed all legal guardianship over Josh to the school. A lot of the students really didn't like him because of his history with the Reavers, and his roommate, Prodigy, really did not like him. Soon, a depowered Wolfsbane would come to the X-Mansion. And a whole mess of things would happen, but what you need to take note of is that Josh and Wolvesbane got really, really close, and Josh would heal away the effects of the weapon that took away Wolvesbane's powers, and this would make her lose control and attack Josh. It's only thanks to Laurie coming in at the last minute and intervening that Josh wasn't totally slaughtered. There was a huge issue, though. Angel was the only healer for the X-Men at this moment in time aside from Josh. With Josh being unconscious, he couldn't heal himself, and Angel was nowhere to be found. Everyone would realize that Josh had to heal himself or die, so Surge would use his abilities to give Josh a small shock and wake him up, and Laurie talked Josh through this whole situation and made him able to heal himself. There was a huge side effect to Josh healing himself, you see, a mutant's powers is really heavily linked with their mental state. So when Josh healed himself, he accidentally turned his skin gold. It's said that he turned his skin gold because he wanted to fit in and be everybody's golden boy. Then when the training squads were formed, Josh was put into Danny's new mutant squad and he was given the name Elixir. Now it is worth saying that Josh and Laurie were romantically involved with one another. They cared for each other very, very deeply. But Josh also cared for Wolfsbane in that same way, which was kind of inappropriate considering Wolfsbane was one of his teachers. Wolfsbane would eventually break everything off with Josh permanently, deciding that yes, this is a very inappropriate relationship. However, Kevin would overhear this breakup and he would use this information to break Josh and Laurie up. Laurie would be a woman scorned. She was really, really bitter towards Josh and she wanted to make him jealous beyond belief. So she kissed his roommate. Josh and Laurie's relationship would begin to repair itself when Laurie's mother visited the school and on the same day, the blob attacked. The blob would knock down the school gates and the gates would land on Laurie's mother. It's only thanks to Josh healing Laurie's mother that she's still alive. And as for the blob, Laurie used her abilities to send him to sleep. Now, as you can tell, the New Mutants were a very drama-filled team. One minute, Josh and Laurie are together. The next minute, they're splitting up. The next, Josh has feelings for Wolfsbane. The next, Kevin is getting involved. And the next minute, Josh and Prodigy hate each other. So Wind Dancer would eventually decide that all the New Mutants needed to go on a camp together on the Xavier Institute grounds. Nothing individually important happens on this night, but what you need to take note of is a whole rainbow of emotions happens, and at the end of the night, everyone had forgiven each other and was closer than ever. After M-Day, Josh was one of only 27 Xavier Institute students to retain their powers. All the other students had to leave the school for their safety. As the bus full of depowered mutants left the Xavier Institute, it was well on its way to its destination when it was attacked by an anti-mutant group. 
a bomb would go off and most of the passengers in this bus would be killed. The remaining mutants would be seething with anger. However, there was no time to wellow in depression. The remaining students at the Xavier Institute were put into an all-out battle royale by Emma Frost to decide who would be part of the new X-Men team in training. Josh would make the cut and his training to become an X-Man would start, but it would be kind of short-lived. You see, one day in a sparring session with Colossus, Josh's anger would reach its peak on his inside and he would attack Colossus with a metal beam while Colossus was depowered. This would result in Josh being kicked off the team temporarily, which was really hard to read and really, really sad. Eventually, Laurie and Josh would talk about Emma Frost's team. You see, Laurie felt like the team really wasn't doing much good. She saw it as violence and violence only breeds violence, which is a really good point. But Josh felt like the team could do something really good if they just kept at what they were already doing. This conversation would be short-lived, however. You see, Laurie would be attacked and killed by Matthew Reisman, who was an agent for Stryker. The X-Men would run outside and would find Laurie and Josh. Josh would be distraught and would be clinging to Laurie's body. Wolverine would try and separate Josh from Laurie's body, but this was a bad decision because in that moment, Josh's powers evolved. As Wolverine was handling Josh, painful boils and warts began to sprout all across Wolverine's hands. Josh would be taken inside and calmed down, but eventually his anger would take over him again. Stryker would attack the X-Mansion, and Josh would use his ability to cause swellings inside of Stryker's body, thus cutting off circulation in his body and killing him. There was another side effect to this. Josh's skin would turn pitch black, and he would be put into a catatonic state. It was only when X-23 badly needed healing, and Julia would tell Josh to get over the past and move on, that he would snap out of things, heal Laura, and his skin would return to gold. Upon his return to the waking world, he had become very, very strange, almost a different person entirely. You see, his gold skin had returned, but he only wore white now, and he was always lost in his own thoughts. It wouldn't be till later on that we found out that he was thinking some very, very dark and very, very frightening thoughts. Eventually, the Stepford Cuckoos would copy Beast's knowledge of anatomy, physiology, and biology from Beast's mind to Josh's, and this allowed Josh to use his powers a lot more accurately. It actually allowed him to do crazy things, like regrow Prodigy's heart after it was torn out by Belasco. However, this did have a side effect of knocking Josh out. It's also worth saying that Josh could still use his negative abilities, which were referred to as black abilities. However, they didn't appear to be as powerful. Now, when I say Josh spent a lot of his time in his own mind, I don't mean that in a, oh, he doesn't really talk and he keeps himself to himself kind of way. I mean, he passed the mark of understanding himself as a human and just became strange. Like one time, Mercury asked him about his age, and Josh didn't respond with 17 or 16. He responded with how he could feel cells regrowing, aging, then dying on his skin. And this freaked Mercury out. Then when Kitty Pride wanted to speak to Josh, Josh sat in the dark on his own, and Kitty was like, what are you doing? And Josh went on about how he could do anything with his powers and he doesn't understand what's stopping him. Naturally this worried Kitty because that was kind of Magneto's mindset years ago. So Kitty and the teachers agreed to keep an eye on Josh to make sure that they weren't raising the second Magneto. After this the only majorly important thing Josh would do is heal Wolfsbane after she was given a heroin overdose by the purifiers but then Wolfsbane would attack Angel and steal his wings, and Josh would heal Angel and try to regrow his wings, and it would be revealed that Angel's wings were never organic. Soon after this, Josh would join the X-Force, and he would be sent to the future with the rest of the X-Force by Cyclops to try and retrieve Hope, Summers, and Cable. He would actually take part in a number of battles in the future, and use his powers to their full potential. Like, he would infect Strife with cancer. 
he would return to the present and straight away he would have to travel to the UN with Wolverine and Archangel to save Surge and Helion. Because he had done so much time traveling and because he'd used his powers so much, he would be able to heal his friends, but straight away after, he would fall into a coma. He would only be revived at the hands of the Norse god Hela. You see, Wolfsbane was actually pregnant with a half Asgardian baby. Josh was only able to save Wolfsbane by strengthening her body to the point that it could handle an Asgardian embryo. Soon after this, the X-Force would go to Genosha to take out Selene. Here, Josh would find himself fighting Kevin to the death. Kevin accused Josh of not loving Laurie enough, and that's why Josh was unable to save Laurie. As this was said, Josh would turn into his black form and say that he always loved Laurie and still does, and he would turn Kevin to dust. After this, Josh would decide to stay in Genosha because he was having trouble shifting out of his black form and he kind of wanted to re-find himself. It would also be revealed that he couldn't heal anymore. And after this, there's nothing. We haven't really seen much or heard anything from him. I think that's such a shame because he's such a well-developed character. You could do a million and one different things with him. And the special thing about him is that he is what the X-Men is all about. He is about emotions. He is about interactions with other people. He's not about violence and fighting. Personally, if I were to write him, I would put him in a team up that no one would be expecting. Maybe something like Elixir and Kid Omega. Something crazy like that, that shouldn't work, but if you really, really think about it, it has the potential to be amazing. I'm not saying something like that needs to happen with Elixir, but I'm just saying that it needs to happen. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. If you think I missed anything about Josh, please let me know in the comments down below. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more history. And also don't forget to support the show by checking out my Patreon, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my gaming channel. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective. Thank you.